Hi, this is Amreen and welcome to Read the Day Club. Today's video, uh, I'm going to be talking about the discourses and selected writings of Epictetus. Epictetus. Um, now, this was my first read and I'm mentioning it because I'm going to read this book multiple times. Just one read is not enough. Then, I, you know, I also have, I have uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Then I have selected works by Cicero. And lastly, uh, I have, yes, Seneca, Letters from a Stoic. Now this one, I just recently finished reading and it is a profoundly insightful book. And so are the others that I mentioned. You know, one thing I would like to add here is that reading Epictetus requires more in that his philosophy is, it's much, denser than uh, Seneca or even Marcus Aurelius. Okay, so uh, who was Epictetus? Very quickly, he was a Greek Stoic philosopher born into slavery and uh, he lived in Rome, but soon uh, moved to Greece after he was freed. And there he taught philosophy and lived a very simple life. As for his discourses and selected writings, um, these were published by his most uh, famous pupil, Arian. Now, this guy studied Epictetus and um, wrote down notes from his lectures, which have now become a part of Socratic literature. So, uh, so what does this book contain? What is Epictetus trying to say? Epictetus talks about our preconceptions and um, he talks about our preconceptions of what is reasonable and unreasonable and how these two things align or don't align with nature. Whoever desires or avoids things outside their control cannot be free or faithful, but has to shift and fluctuate right along with them. For what else are tragedies but the ordeals of people who have come to value externals? No bull reaches maturity in an instant, nor do men become heroes overnight. We must endure a winter training and can't be dashing into situations for which we aren't yet prepared. Even if I lack the talent, I will not abandon the effort on that account. We do not abandon any discipline for despair of ever being the best in it. Most of us dread the deadening of the body and will do anything to avoid it. About the deadening of the soul, however, we don't care one iota. So now I'm going to tell you some of my favorite things about this book. On providence, Epictetus says that in the end we must have patience, we must have the strength, inner strength to deal with the difficulties and not being aware of that makes you an unlucky person because he, he says that we have all of what it takes to overcome misfortunes. We have a whole reservoir of patience that we can use to deal with the problems within our control. It isn't death, pain, exile or anything else you care to mention that accounts for the way we act. Only our opinion about death, pain and the rest. We identify with our stomachs, guts and genitals because we are still vulnerable to fear and desire. We flatter and creep before anyone with the power to hurt us where any of those things are concerned. On externals. Epictetus's philosophy is basically this. Our external world does not lie within our control. This includes wealth, health to a certain extent, death of a loved one, being liked by others and a hundred other things. Anything that's not within the realm of our mind will always have the power or potential to take us by surprise, to outmaneuver us. So the only thing we can control is our perception. He refers to it as our realm of choice. External circumstances cannot be controlled, but how we react to them is a matter of choice. That internal dialogue we have with ourselves that determines our attitude toward those external circumstances. And this power of choice is what human freedom is made up of. On deistic stoicism. Now, Epictetus' Socratic literature is more obviously, like in comparison to Seneca or Marcus Aurelius, is more obviously sprinkled with divine intervention. He refers to God as Zeus and uh, calls us humans the children of Zeus. Although, you know, I interpreted Zeus as more of a universal and um, metaphysical energy. 
and Epictetus's huge chunk of philosophy conveys this worldly message of aligning with what God has determined for us that Zeus has you know plans for us and that we have to accept these truths and um, allow the natural flow of things to occur instead of moaning and complaining about them. Nature gives a person rules and guidelines to discover the truth and instead of trying to complement and improve on them, they devote themselves to impugning and rejecting the least little thing that could assist them in the effort. I'm a human being, a part of the whole, like an hour in a day. Like the hour, I must abide my time and like the hour, pass. For Epictetus, uh, even uh, the notion of, uh, of death is materialistic. You know, in a way, he denies the afterlife by saying that death is the finale or finale of existence. After that, um, he says that whatever materials uh, of the body remain are freed and utilized for other things. Because if you go to see, I, I mean, according to him, even uh, even our bodies are not our own. They're given to us much like everything else in the world by Zeus. So if he wants to take it back, there's nothing we can do about it. On fighting against impressions. Impressions are our moral inclinations, the way we judge what happens to and around us. So Epictetus talks about resisting the force of impressions. He says, um, he tells us to stop and think about what our impressions represent about infusing rational thinking into our awareness and judgments. If we exercise this power, this will to identify and correct our natural inclinations, we'll be able to discover what we're truly made of. He's quite blunt when it comes to questioning our preconceptions. He says that if we're so good and confident at using our preconceptions and impressions for making decisions, then why are we still so unhappy, confused and at odds with reality? So stop kidding yourselves and deceiving others about what's most important and stop assuming an identity that's not your own. You're all thieves and robbers at large of deeds and titles that don't in the least pertain to you. Now I don't like being called a thief and a robber but that's exactly the thing with, um, with Epictetus. His presence and voice in the book then it's you know it's not friendly it's it's not sophisticated um, like he doesn't speak to you as a friend um, unlike uh, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius um, his rather his tone is it's very berating it's very mocking but that is something I really enjoyed in this book on living quietly now this point brings into the picture the main teaching of Stoic philosophy to live freely without anxiety and fear and um, you know the way to that requires us to practice detachment detachment um, from anything that's outside our control acceptance of our own reality stripped down to its bare minimum and indifference toward both criticism and praise and I believe that um, these qualities will only come to us if we um, if we get ourselves to practice them long enough at every step of the way Epictetus is trying to see through you and Look at your utter incapacity to practice stoicism and he knows he knows very well that we're not just Unable to practice the school of philosophy, but that we're also lying to ourselves We're honoring and valuing externals and assuming identities that are not our own and his gaze is very intimidating just keep in mind, the more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. There is bound to be frustration when you exert yourself. You desire what is not in your control, fine. But be prepared to be refused, to be frustrated, to come up empty-handed on internal versus external. Now I know that I've already talked about externals but I have to mention it again since this is precisely why I liked the book so much. The entire internal versus external philosophy that Epictetus illustrates is very insightful. He talks about how what people want is what contributes to their happiness but how we look for it in the wrong places. At the same time he also sheds light on the aspect of internal struggles. You can not care about externals and still struggle with your internal state of mind, which is constantly worried about questions and scenarios beyond our control.
Epictetus emphasizes our free will as human beings and uh, he's, how we can use our impressions to live a simple, um, happy and peaceful life. And for that, we need to remove what's not in our control from what is. He says that trying to avoid misfortunes set forth by nature is only absurd because death is as natural as, uh, as birth, destruction the same as growth. So we shouldn't be surprised by either and we shouldn't be affected by both. And you know, uh, Epictetus is uh, sometimes the messages of his theories do seem repetitive throughout the book, but I didn't have a problem with that. In fact, I liked it because he makes you view the same thing from different perspectives. Like the point he's trying to make needs to be hammered down, otherwise it just won't stick. And through all of this, you also uh, get a glimpse of Epictetus, which in itself is a whole other perspective. On that note, I'd like to end this video. I hope I've convinced you to read uh, Discourses and Selected Writings by Epictetus. Please don't be intimidated by the book. It is a dense read, no doubt, but you don't have to worry about things not registering in your brain. It's not that sort of a book, I assure you. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts and see you next time.